All right, today we're going to talk about the intermediate value theorem. I have set this up, so we're going to go through the definition. I'll explain it with a graph, and then we'll do an example. Okay, so we're going to say that suppose a function f of x is continuous on a closed interval a, b, and we're going to let some number n be any number between f of a and f of b, where f of a is not equal to f of b. So this first part is saying it's continuous and we're going to pick the two endpoints and some number n is going to be between those two endpoints. Then we say there exists a number c in our interval a, b, such that f of c is equal to n. So what this means in a graph is suppose we have a function that is looking like this and on the interval we're going to start out here we're going to say this is a and at the end point here this is b then f of a is evaluated at this point down here and f of b is some point here now we're going to pick a place somewhere along this graph and we're going to call it n so we're going to say it's n here and now what we're saying there is a point located right here at C, where if we evaluate this at C, we're going to have f of C equals to n. So this will happen with every continuous graph. It is very important this graph is continuous. In fact, let's take a look at a graph that is doing something like this. Okay. Well, if we take a function and we say our interval is from a to say here is b then well we can make this f of b and we can make this f of a and as long as we're in between this zone we can pick an n bam and right here this is some point c which n is equal to f of c so this will happen in any graph, whether f of a is bigger than f of b, or if f of a is smaller than f of b. It doesn't matter the order as long as they're not equal. Okay, so in an example, how is this used? This can be used for problems where roots are very tricky to find. So let's take an example. We want to show that the equation 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus 3x minus 2 equal to 0 has a root on the closed interval 1 and 2. Okay, so what we do is we evaluate the endpoints here. So we're going to evaluate f at that point and f at this point. So f of 1 is going to be 4 times 1 cubed minus 6 times 1 squared plus 3 times 1 minus 2, which is 4 minus 6 plus 3 minus 2, which is going to equal to negative 1. Okay, so we're going to put this in our little database over here. f of 1 is equal to negative 1. Now let's check out f of 2. Well, this is 4 times 2 cubed minus 6 times 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 2 which is going to be the same as 32 minus 24 plus 6 minus 2. Okay, so 32 minus 24 is 8, plus 6 is 14, minus 2 is 12. All right, so we know that f of 2 is equal to 12. All right, so here's what we know. We're looking for a certain number where f of c is equal to zero because that is what a root of a number is is when the equation equals zero so we know that f of one is less than zero and f of two is greater than zero so there must be some number between one and two or when we evaluate it that also equals zero in fact you can test out numbers so you can say, well, what is f of 1.2? And it might be a little bit above zero. So actually f of 1.2 would be a little bit below zero. And f of, say, 1.4 would be a little bit above zero. In fact, for a proof, if you take the number f 
of 1.225, it is roughly equal to 0. So the root does exist between 1 and 2. Okay, so this is pretty much all there is to the intermediate val value theorem. It's a very important theorem when finding out whether roots exist, and sometimes in mathematics, it's not about finding the number. It's just finding that there exists some number, and, and that's good enough for a mathematician to make claims about functions. So this is why the intermediate value theorem is so important. It's also used to prove some stuff in integration, which will come up later, and is basically another big building block in the foundation of calculus. So we're going to have another practice question for you guys, and we're going to take the equation e to the x is equal to 3 minus 2x, and we want to show there is a root on 0, 1. All right, so pause the video, take a few moments to try this question out, and see you guys in a second. All right, hopefully you had enough time to figure this one out. Uh, first thing we're going to do is rewrite this uh, problem. So it's 0 equals 3 minus 2x minus e to the x. Okay, the first thing we do is we evaluate it at the endpoint. So we're going to take f of 0 is equal to 3 minus 2 times 0 minus e to the 0, which is... 3 minus 0 minus 1, since anything to the 0 is equal to 1, which is equal to 2. All right, let's put this in our database of information. f of 0 is equal to 2. And now f of 1 is equal to 3 minus 2 times 1 minus e to the 1, which is equal to 1 minus e. Now, of course, you might not be able to get further than this if you don't know what value e is, but e is roughly 2.71. It might be 2.17. Either way, it's bigger than 2, which means that f of 1 is, we're going to say it's roughly negative 1.5. The exact values don't matter. Again, we just need to know that um, we have f of 1 less than 0 less than f of 0. So there exists some number f of c between 1 and 0. Therefore, we have proven that there is a root on this interval here. And again, this, this is a very, very simple problem, and it can be used to find a root that would be otherwise very difficult. So now what you can do is you can take, say, f of 0 0.5. You can plug it in, and you can see what you get. If it's higher or lower, then you, you then adjust your number, and in a computer algorithm, in fact, it might be easier to guess all these complex functions and keep guessing and changing the guess until you get a root rather than, say, plugging in doing other weird methods. It's just better to say, hey, is there a root? Do a quick, do a quick check, and if there is, we're good. If not, well, then we move on.